Depending on your teacher or your textbook, you'll see many different ways of breaking down the scientific method, but no matter how many versions I've seen, they all seem to share some way these five steps. The first thing that whenever you're doing science is to ask a question. Next, do some research. Third, come up with a hypothesis. Fourth, test it with a hypothesis, or sorry, with an experiment. And then finally, draw a conclusion. Now, some people have this idea that in order to do science, you have to have, be wearing a lab coat and have a PhD. That's not it at all. At its heart, to do science, all you have to do is be curious and start asking questions about the world. For example, this could range anywhere from as important and deep as, how do I cure cancer, to as simple as, what's the fastest way for me to get from San Jose to San Francisco? Now that I've asked a question, it's time for me to find out what do people know or think they know. And this is where some people wind up running into trouble because a scientist or somebody who's thinking like a scientist, when they do their research, they're always skeptical about what they're reading. So if you read, for example, that somebody online has posted their cure for cancer, which is to jump rope while singing jingle bells. If you do that for 10 minutes, you're cured. I would demand a lot of evidence to back that up. So let's go to the other question that I had, which is which ways to get to San Francisco is fastest? Well, if I do some research, that'll help me narrow down my choices, and perhaps there's three ways to get there. Highway 101, Highway 280, and city streets. Now, based on my research, everybody seems to agree that driving city streets would take way too long. Some people argue 101 because it's shorter. Other people say 280 has less traffic. So based on my research, it's time for me to come up with a hypothesis. And I'm going to go with the side, the group of people who said that Highway 101 is shortest. And I think, eh, shortest equals fastest. So I will come up with my hypothesis that based on the shorter length of Highway 101 versus the longer length of Highway 280, it will take me less time to drive from San Jose to San Francisco taking Highway 101. Now, that is a scientific hypothesis because you'll notice something it can be proved wrong. You have to be careful. You can make a guess, but if it can't be proved wrong, then it's not a scientific hypothesis. For example, if somebody says, I love you, that may not be wrong, but you can't test it. You can't hook them up to a level meter and say, oh, sorry, you're only 10.7 on the love scale. And, and if you say, well, why did you kiss that other girl? Uh, because I don't think I'm a very good kisser, and I want to practice to be better because I love you. So that's not science. All right, now I've got my hypothesis. It's time to design my experiment. And what I'll do is I'll drive Highway 101 a number of times, drive 280 a number of times, average my results, and take a look at what they mean. That's the last step, and that's where you draw a conclusion. Now, I'm always a little bit leery about saying draw a conclusion because one year I did that, and the student turned into me a lab, and he did a great job on the lab, except instead of having a final paragraph where he went through his experiment and explained what the results meant and whether or not his hypothesis was right, and he explained a few refinements to his experiment, instead, all there was was a stick figure like this. And I showed it to him and I said, what's this? And he said, I drew a conclusion. I was right. So, in my experiment, let's assume uh, it, uh, my average t travel time from San Jose to uh, San Francisco via 101 was uh, 55 minutes while Highway 280 was 48 minutes on average. My conclusion that I'm drawing is that I was wrong. My hypothesis was incorrect. Instead, Highway 280, because of the less traffic, was uh, a faster route. Now, I would also want to suggest some refinements. I might suggest, hey, if I run this experiment at other times of day, maybe off-peak hours as opposed to rush hour, maybe I'll get different results. As one final side note to this is the idea of what is a hypothesis versus a theory. Now, we just discovered or discussed what is a hypothesis. Now, once a hypothesis has been tested, you start kind of moving it on this spectrum towards becoming a theory. Over time, a hypothesis will get tested over and over and sometimes refined, like my refinement of perhaps it depends on the time of day. But ultimately, you'll start calling that hypothesis a theory. Now, a high theory, like a hypothesis, could have the possibility of being proved wrong. And sometimes they will be, and scientists will just reject it. For example, the common theory used to be that the Earth was in the center of the universe and the Sun went around the Earth. And there was a lot of evidence to base on that. I mean, you could see the Sun goes up and the Sun goes down. 
Well, it turned out that was wrong. Scientists did more experiments and came up with a better explanation that the sun is in the center of our solar system and the earth goes around that. And that's still just a theory, but I don't expect to see that one proved wrong anytime soon. Mm-hmm.